Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable podcast, we've got joining us Bearland Aaron. Bearland Aaron, how are you? Hey, glad to be here, Mark. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. We've got Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are things? Things are good, thanks. And of course, we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm, I'm great. It's been a good week. Good start of the month already. What, why was it so good? Well, we'll get into that a minute, in a minute. All right. All right. And then, of course, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and most importantly, if not automating, your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, but I'm a little concerned about um, Tate and some uh, something. I, called, I, uh, I think he has a big revelation to make. What do you think? Yeah. I, Tate, talk, talk about something. You got a it's confession. more of a confession. Yeah. It's more of a confession. And uh, I need to just come straight out and get it off my chest. And uh, is this, wait, before you do, before you do Tate, like, d- d- does your wife know about this confession? And not only does she know about it, she supports me in it, Scott. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The confession I have to make is I have been cheating. Cheating? Yep. I've what? Been cheating. cheating in what way? I've been cheating at this business. I've been cheating, Scott. And the way that I've been cheating is I have bought so much wholesale land over the last month that our enterprise value in three days went up like $110,000, all because I mailed zero offers. How amazing is that? Yeah, that's cheating all right. (laughs) Should I feel bad about this? Should I feel bad about this? It's like I I just tapped into this this method for acquiring great property at a fantastic price that I can sell and still make my numbers on. I mean, I just bought seven properties from Eric yesterday. Poor Eric gave them to me at a song and I'm going to make, I don't know, 400% on the deal. It's amazing. It's the greatest, the greatest revelation I've ever had in this business. It's amazing. Yeah. But Scott Todd, why is he, is he sort of positioning this as, as cheating? Yeah. Yeah. So look, Mark, last, last week in flight school, we had a conversation about uh, the fact that, you know, some, some people are getting offer letters back at a different rate. Right. And that's the way it happens. People, people have offer letters that come at different times. And I basically said, Hey, look, uh, cause, and then, so one person said, Hey, I'm not getting the offer letters back at the same pace that I want to. And another person said, man, I've got this land, but I don't have the money. And I'm like, let me introduce you guys, right? Like you both have a problem and boom, you, you, you go. And so then I got an email or a message from a flight school student who basically said, hey, I cheated and uh, just bought some land wholesale. And I was, really, I was really shocked by the words cheated, right? I, I know he's just goof around and, and, and playing around. But that said, you know, like I do see people that are like really hesitant to like buy land wholesale because there is something fun about, well, there's no, so, not, no, 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 there no. is something sexy about like mailing an offer letter and then someone bringing it back to you and you're like, I got it. It's like hunting, right? But in fact, it's terribly painful, I think. <laughs> you know, well, like let's, I, everything wholesale. Let's talk to the hunter in the group, Bearland Aaron. <laughs> is, is it considered cheating in a way the model if you sort of take this simpler approach and buy wholesale where someone else went out and and did sort of the the mailing piece of it well no i don't think it's so much cheating i mean it is a shortcut but shortcuts are you know sometimes the the life of business you know um i think it was like maybe the second or third property we owned i bought from tate wholesale and this is early on you know um when things just sometimes aren't moving along 
in the mailing section the way you need them to, you know, you still have responsibility of a business to run. You have to look first and foremost to that business and its viability. And if that means, you know, hey, I'm going to go out on the open market to the wholesale market and pick up some land so I can sell it and I can keep my business running and I can feed my family and do the things that I want to do. Oh, that's not cheating. You know, who says? Who says that's cheating? I don't. Maybe Eric, maybe Eric Peterson says it's cheating. Eric, when you first started, would you consider taking a shortcut in the business, especially when you're going through something like flight school, right? Is this cheating? No, it's, it's not. It's actually, um, I would consider it to be a, a great strategy, especially for those people just getting started. So, um, in, in particular, those in flight school. So if they've got a property from day one, as they're moving through the modules with Scott and learning about all the processes, yeah, they can, they can start mailing and doing their county research as, as Scott teaches that. But if they already have a property at the same time, they could be marketing that property and trying to sell it. Now, they're not going to get to the marketing module till a couple modules later, but when they do get there, they're going to be well prepared. They have a property to market and they're going to be able to just take off and, and start using those methods right away. So um, actually, I mean, in my opinion, every student that, that starts flight school should have a property in hand, ready to go. Um, because, you know, we all know it takes three to four weeks at least uh, once you start mailing till you start getting, you know, those, those offers back and uh, then you got to do your due diligence and then, you know, you can purchase them. But um, it's a, it's a slow process, especially just getting started, which is also why we say don't stop mailing. Right, right. And um, speaking of flight school, today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. If you want to learn more about flight school and the ins and outs and what you can achieve in there, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with Mike Zane or Scott Bossman, Land Geek certified coaches, and talk to them about May flight school, which is uh, filling up fast. So, Scott Todd, what are your what are your thoughts with your flight school students? Should they be sticking to the knitting? Is it okay to to do a wholesale deal? Well, I think I think that uh, there's there's a okay to do a wholesale deal. The problem I have is when they do it like week one, because they're not ready. They need to I think learn the fundamentals of hunting. But then once they have that, and then there's time to 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 go, you know, in between, I think that they're good to go to to get some wholesale land. And, um, right, right. you know, and then, then they can start executing on the, the market and, and then the, uh, the sales piece. Yeah. You know, it was interesting at boot camp. Mark Livingston had a mailing that he was going through LG pass and something went, went horribly wrong. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but the mailing sort of just failed on him. So his deal flow just basically dries up. And what Mark does, is he pivots. He's like, well, I'm not stopping. I'm not going to be a chicken company with no chicken right? And he buys property from people in the community wholesale. And I thought that was a really savvy way of solving that problem. And then, you know, of course, I personally think that the more deal flow channels you have from the mailing to wholesaling, you can do automation with Craigslist, that IFTT.com video that I have, just go to Geek or youtube.com forward slash land geek and look up um, Craigslist automation. Is it Craigslist? Yeah. Like to look for FISBO deals. Like why not? Right. Um, Tate, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. I mean, I'm, I'm buying as much land as I can wholesale just because at first it is sexy to mail and, and get the, get the land, go through the entire process. But once you've done it a number of times, you realize that, Hey, if I could eliminate, this entire part of my business, I could focus on just one thing and that's selling land, something that I'm really good at. And so it helps you reach your goals. Now, I do think it's important to be well-versed on how to do it because sometimes you're not going to be able to find the land you want in the areas you're looking for. So that's when the mailing needs to come in and you got to know how to price property. But I don't know. I think that uh, you're a smart, smart investor and a smart business owner. If you looked at all resources, uh, that you have available to you. So when I say cheating, I don't mean it's cheating by any means. I think it's fair play, but uh, you know, I, I, it's turned out to be really uh, a good investment for me. 
Right, right. I mean, let's let's put on, you know, let's have Bearland Aaron put on like the Sigmund Freud hat and look at it psychologically. I could imagine that somebody would have a psychological barrier of, hey, look, you are making about a hundred percent return on me. And as a result, why should I pay the premium for a wholesale piece of property when I can just mail and get it and save myself that hundred percent markup, most likely. Fairland Aaron, do you think that's a psychological barrier? No, oh, it definitely is. I mean, I've struggled with that myself because, you know, you, you think of uh, kind of some of the principles of a you know a business. This kind of business is you're trying to buy things, um, a product, and you're trying to get it as cheaply as possible you know, with the quality that you want and you're trying to sell it for as much money as possible. So in that mindset, you know, the mailing's the way to go because that is where you're going to get it as inexpensive as possible. Um, but the thing that a lot of people don't consider, I think, is that you have a couple advantages to the whole sale is, um, you know, the property's already been vetted. You don't have the due diligence expense and time. Um, you can still check a couple things out just to double check for your own peace of mind. But, you know, that's been done by if you're buying from a reputable wholesaler, you know, somebody that's been through the program and has some experience, you should feel pretty confident in knowing that you're buying a good property. That saves you a lot of time, times money, you know. Um, and you're you're not having to go through the time of the whole mailing piece and all that. So you're saving a lot that can offset some of that extra cost because you're not going to spend it on the next step. Um, for a flight school student, the other advantage to having, you know, wholesale property, even if you are mailing, um, that you're starting to market while you're in flight school is when you do get to that marketing piece, uh, just think of the, instead of, uh, just instead of learning everything from a blank slate, you know, if you've already been trying to market a property, maybe you've had some trial and error experience. Just think of the questions you're going to have, uh, you know, when flights, when that module does come along, um, you, mu you might be at a further place and you might get more out of that flight school module because you have had some, you know, marketing experience. So there's a lot of advantages to it. And that psychological barrier is something that you just have to contend with because it, it is there. But you need to think of it in two ways and see which of those two ways is more beneficial to your business at the moment. Right. And, and Scott Todd, I think it's really important for the people listening, people listening that they are not sort of taken in by the funny math of a wholesale deal where you and I will talk about it like, Oh, look at this person trying to quote unquote wholesale this deal. And so let's kind of walk back. Like what, does a wholesale deal really comprise of? So like for me, what I'm looking for when I'm buying land wholesales, I'm looking to, um, to be able to uh, double my money on a cash sale. So, you know, if the land's going for a uh, $2,000, well then I need to be able to buy that land for a maximum of a thousand. Forget what the terms price is for a minute. I need to be able to at least double my money on the cash deal. And that's kind of what I look for when I'm looking at, at um, you know, wholesale properties. Yeah, I mean, Eric Peterson, what we see oftentimes is a wholesaler saying, hey, look, this is what you can sell it for on terms. And that's not, that's not the wholesale price. It's exactly what Scott said, right? It's going to be the liquidation value on a cash sale. Can I make at least 100% on that? So how would you go about, like if you're a newbie, how would you go about protecting yourself to make sure that you're not overpaying on a wholesale deal and you're not sort of getting being taken advantage of by a more experienced, maybe a predatory seller, you know, sort of luring you in with these whole, you know, look, this is what you're going to sell it for on, on terms. Yeah. So I think that, um, Obviously, it requires doing your own comps, right? I mean, you can't go by what the wholesaler is telling you exclusively. I mean, yes, those are points of data to consider, but you need to go out and, and check those comps yourself and 
look at past sales and uh, see if you can find some cash sales to, to match it up against and make sure you're comfortable with those numbers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Tate, how do you find the best wholesale deals? Well, I contact my friends within the business. I mean, you know, I'll reach out to people I like working with or trust. I even have one guy that I work with where I can call him up and place an order. Say, Hey, I want land in this area. This is the max I'll pay for it. Go nuts. You know, it, it, I think it comes down to working within our community. That's, that's so amazing. And I'd feel comfortable buying from anybody that, you know, is, has gone through flight school with Scott because I trust Scott and I know that Scott teaches everybody the correct way of doing things. So when I know that and I have that confidence in somebody's education and, and the way that they do business, and I also know that they're going to stand behind their product, right? If the property I buy from Eric turns out to be, um, have a bunch of issues with it that Eric maybe missed, I know Eric's going to make it right. You know, Eric's not going to miss anything because he's one of the most thorough guys I know, but that's the kind of trust and confidence that I have. And that's what makes buying wholesale property that much easier for me. And ultimately the person selling the property has to understand that I need to make money on this deal too. And if both parties are in agreement on that, then the deal can go by super smoothly. Yeah, absolutely. So just to go, you know, full circle on this. Tate, you really weren't cheating. I wouldn't say so. Right. I think I was just taking advantage of some options that were out there for me. I mean, I saw a good deal. The margins were there. The comps made sense. It was a no brainer. Who cares if I paid more than I would have mailing? I didn't have to mail. I didn't have to make a list. I didn't have to get a list. I didn't do any due diligence on it. All I did was look at the numbers on the back end and think, yep, I can make money here. Right. I decided in minutes, you know. And Scott Todd, if you're in flight flight school, school, when would you feel comfortable having a flight school student do a wholesale deal? Uh, I'd say like when when we get to um, when we get to the to the marketing piece, not not before, but when we get to the marketing piece, uh, you're good to go. Good to go. All right. So let's go to the next issue, Bearland Aaron, and let's talk about what's going on. Um, you know, I've got this, uh, this deal. It was a kind of a bulk deal I did, and I sent uh, my seller the deed a month ago. Um, and he has, he's sporadically been in contact with me, so he didn't fall off the face of the earth. He just won't move his feet. Um, he just won't take this deed and get it notarized and get it back to me, you know, and I've actually pre-sold the properties. So, um, you know, I kind of want to go around the table and see, you know, what were, what are the thoughts on something like this? Like, how do you get this guy to move his feet? Do you just refund people and move on? You know, um, I'm considering, you know, kind of both options, you know, being a little more forceful in my emails to him. But at the same time, you know, he can just decide, well, I don't like you anymore. I'm not going to sell you the property. So you can only go too far or so far with him. You can only pressure your seller so much, Um, you know, but it's always, it always is not fun to give money back, (laughs) Um, you know, or try to work a deal and find more of the same kind of property for the for the person who's put a deposit down with me. Um, you know, what do you guys go through? Just kind of wanted to go around the table and talk about it a little bit. Well, let's start with Eric, the hammer Peterson. So I, I think the first thing I would do in that situation, especially since you have some stuff pre-sold, um, I would get them on the phone and say, listen, I'm going to send out a mobile notary tomorrow. Um, you know, here's how the process is going to go. And by the way, this is, you know, going to cost me a hundred dollars to do it. So, you know, I'd like to talk to you about knocking that off the price. You know, um, I would take that kind of action on it. Um, if I didn't have pre-sales already, I might say, you know, um, I really need you to get this taken care of this week. If you can't, um, you know, 
I'm probably going to need to adjust my price because I'm out there buying other property in this area and I'm starting to get more property than I want to hold in inventory. So, um, you know, we might, we might need to talk about that piece of it. Um, I might try a couple methods like that. Yeah. I, I was thinking literally the exact same thing. I'd be curious, Tate, is there anything you would do differently than what the hammer would do? Oh, I tell you, I'm mute. Sorry. Um, I like that nickname, the hammer. That's, that's sounds powerful. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Did that just come to you right now? Yeah. I just, like it. It's just flowing. Nice. I like it. Um, you know, no, I, I agree with uh, what Eric said. It, it's unfortunate. And, you know, I've been in this situation uh, a time or two myself. And I basically called the person and said, you know, hey, listen, what's going on? Why are you dragging your feet? Uh, are we doing this deal or not? Because otherwise, I'm going to put the money to work elsewhere. And normally, that motivates them. But uh, sometimes it won't. And that might be the rare occasion that I bring in a mobile notary. Yeah, yeah. Scott, Todd, what's, what's your advice to the bear land? Uh, I think the same thing. I think I would uh, just, I mean, I think Eric actually nailed it. Who should have gone to him last? Because me, I would have been like, listen, you're going to get this paperwork signed now. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have gone to the mobile notary. Like, what's the hang up? Like, I need this done now or I'm moving on. And, uh, but I do like the idea of the mobile notary and, um, you know, scare them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Scott would actually send pictures of the mini bat to the seller and say, I don't want to use it, but I will if you don't meet the mobile notary on this date and time at your local, you know, Starbucks or McDonald's. You could, Aaron, you could say, like, since, since it is pre sold, you could say, hey, listen, I'm running, I'm like, this is important to me. I need to get this thing wrapped up. And if you get it wrapped up tomorrow, if I can get these documents back like tomorrow, I'll give you an extra hundred dollars. I don't know. Like you could take it a different way instead of saying, Hey, I'm going to send the notary out. Like try to encourage them with a little bit more cash. Hey, I yeah, think I'll I, try I, that. Yeah. I, I know Tate though. Tate would be like, well, if you'd pay an extra hundred dollars, surely you'd pay an extra 200. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, I like what Scott said and uh, I think you got some options here. So you got some ideas. Let us know how it goes, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go, uh, I think first I'll do, you know, I'll offer him a little more, more money just as an incentive to, to do that. And then if that still doesn't move him, I'll move on to the notary option. And if that doesn't do it, we're going to move on. He's going to lose the opportunity to, to sell his property. Have you, have you given him a deadline that says like, Hey, you need to have this done in the next 48 hours or something? Uh, no, I did. Um, I did let him know that, you know, I had um, people wanting to invest in these properties who have already put deposits down and so forth. And I really needed to get this accomplished, you know, and I said, uh, you know, asked him if he could, uh, I don't believe in pressuring my sellers who are so gracious to sell us their property. However, could you give me a timetable? And he, he said, Oh, I'll get it done. <laughs> that was all I heard from him. I mean, sorry, I'll get it done. I've got a guy who's this way and we, I call him every single day. Yeah. I'd it, pester yeah. Him. Don't pressure him, but just, Hey, just calling to make sure, you know, you got the documents. Did you get them signed today? No. How about tomorrow? You're going to do it tomorrow. You don't know. Okay. I'll call you tomorrow and see if you got it done. Right. That, that would be the approach I would take. That's the approach we take anyways. And, and put him on a pedestal <laughs> too. Like, you know, say, look, I know you're a person of your word. And I really appreciate this old school land selling where your word is your bond. And, you know, and my word is my bond as well. And I certainly would hate to have to go back on my word with the people that have already, you know, pre-bought property from me because, you know, we're just, we just have this logistic issue. So can we, how can we solve this together? Will this work if I have a mobile notary meet you with you, but it really needs to get done. And I so appreciate you, you know, being the kind of person that respects doing this and, uh, you know, and I want to get you that, that check out as soon as possible. And also it wouldn't mind if you, uh, left a testimony on my website too. I love it. 
yeah, I've got a lot of great options I'm going to try now. So I hope the, I hope the listeners find a lot of value in that as well. I think they will. Aaron, I I think you should just give them the choice, you know, say I can, I can send out a mobile notary and, you know, make this really easy for you because it seems, you know, you have a tight schedule or however you want to describe that. Or if you think you can get this done tomorrow, I'll give you an extra hundred bucks. Like just let him choose. So that way it's like, you know, what, what's better for you. And uh, either option is, is a win for you if you can get it done. So. Right. Right. Excellent. So speaking of a lot of value for the listeners, uh, Scott Todd is doing something like very similar to the Atlanta Falcons. So if everyone doesn't know, like if you go to any, any NFL stadium, right. A hot dog is like eight bucks now, you know, a, a beer is like, I don't even know. I don't drink beer, but like it's expensive everywhere along the line. It's super, super expensive. And the Atlanta Falcons owner who actually owns Home Depot was like, well, what happens if we lower our prices? And what happened was they're actually, they had more sales, not only more revenue, but they actually had more profit because people just ultimately bought a lot more with the lower prices. Well, CoStar comes in and buys out, what is it, Lands of America? Lands of America, Land, land and Farm, Land Watch, like all of them. Right. They buy them all and they do exactly what the majority of the NFL owners are doing. They raise the prices where Scott, what are you doing? So Mark, uh, you know, what, what set me on this path? I was just asked yesterday, like, why, why did you open up land moto to the, uh, to the public, like to the other land investors? And, you know, it all started last year. What happened last year was, I was, I was a happy land and farm customer paying $50 a month for unlimited listings. And then that's when they uh, made their little change. And then what they did was they went from 150, I'm sorry, from 50 to 150. But instead of being unlimited, it was limited at 50. Then by the end of the year, they doubled it from that. They went to 300. And then after that, I just got a call a couple weeks ago. It's now over $600 for 50 listings. That's it. Like, it's ridiculous. And, you know, that's when I opened up Land Moto to, to try to drive more, you know, like to, to say, hey, listen, we're not going to stand for this. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, here's the line in the sand. We're not doing this anymore. And, you know, I'll open up my own platform, which had a pretty decent amount of traffic. And I will take the money that you want to charge me and I will invest in my own platform. And that's what I started doing is, is I took my money. And instead of paying them, I went off and, and uh, started building and expanding land moto and you know essentially what we're doing now is we're actually changing our pricing to actually have a free plan a free plan so that it would be unlimited listings for free and then there would be three plans a free plan and more details are coming but a free plan uh you know that middle of the road plan and then the the platinum plan which actually gets you know you access to my buyers list of almost 7,000 people. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's great. You know, a few weeks ago, Jeff Detmer was, was on the mastermind call. He's talked about how he sent out the, uh, the, the listing on the uh, deal of the week on a Sunday, 11 AM by, by 5 PM, he had a sale and we see a lot, we see the activity that's taking place on the website increasing. It's, it's encouraging. So, we're doing, we're doing something cool. We're going to reduce the payment and we're going to reduce the pricing. And we know that that will drive as a whole community will drive more traffic to the site and we're excited to release it. So details are coming. So stay tuned, Mark. I love it. I love it. And um, I don't know if I mentioned that flight school for May is almost filled up. Did I mention it? Um, we yeah. didn't, I, I didn't. Yeah. Just go to the land forward slash training schedule call. Learn more about flight school. Oh, by the way, um, I know we were talking about our tip of the week. My tip of the week is there's this new book that's coming out. I don't know if anybody's heard about it yet. It's called dirt rich. How one ambitiously lazy geek created passive income in real estate without renters, renovations, and rehabs. 
we're going to have special launched pricing coming out very soon. It's going to be so low. It's going to be embarrassingly low. We're well, going to be embarrassed if you don't order it. So you can get the first chapter right now for free. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash dirt dash rich, which actually opts you in for a bunch of special bonuses as well for the book. Um, we're going to have a coupon that's going to be ridiculous for like, you know, that can go towards the investor's toolkit or flight school. Um, if, if you go ahead and, uh, and do that. So we're going to make it irresistible. That's, uh, that's how we move Lance, how, how we're going to move books. You guys like it? Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to thank all the listeners and uh, remind them the only way that Barryland Aaron is going to keep coming up and showing up to these roundtable podcasts is if you do favors, you got to rate. Well, first you got to subscribe, then you got to review, then you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And um, it really helps us as well. So please do that. Tate, are we good? We are good. All right. Eric, the hammer? <laughs> We're good. We're good. Bearline Aaron? Roar, man. We're good. Six Sigma? We're great, Mark. We're great. All right. I want to thank everybody. <laughs> and uh, here we go. One, two, three. Let freedom, Let freedom ring. ring. That was Jeez, atrocious. Louise, bear bear land. Land. Right, bear land. Talk about that. Look, can we just have him lead next time? Because, or maybe that, not even join. How about I don't do it? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're going I'll mouth it. Viewers uh, here. Like, that was ridiculous. Like, well, here's, here's our next poll. Should we even do it anymore? Yeah, of course we're going to do it. I don't, we don't need to do a poll. I love it. You love it? Yeah, it's great. I, you know, when Scott and I have a guest on, it's so cringeworthy. Like Maybe we, we need a doctor on today. Do it for our guest and just do it within the community. And it's just you two. Yeah. I know. This is us. To like, we've got this neurosurgeon on who's raising like hundreds of millions of dollars in, you know, for all this stuff. And like, what freedom ring? And he's like... What a podcast they just go on. I think, Mark, I think we got to, I think we got to kill it when we have just general guests on and keep that within the community. All right. What do you think? Is Tate? Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, as long as we keep it, I just don't want to lose it. At this point, it's like part of our heritage, part of, part of our history. <laughs> It's like, it's like our, it's like our motto, man. Like it's like our, I mean, think about it. We, we, we've actually had people like even in like boot camp and in flight school, that's how we end the last one. Like it's, it's like, it's us. It's our call to action. It is our call to action. Yeah. What do you think, Eric? Yeah. We just got to get better at it. It's really hard on zoom. I mean, we barely hearing this. That you might as well have been like five seconds off. Like that was. Oh my gosh. And, and on my end, it sounded like we were all at the same time. So, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is what happens when you live in the sticks. Your internet is so laggy. Let's just have. I know. I think the, the donkey turn everywhere. in the gear. Wait, Eric, what did you say? I said, let's just have Aaron in the podcast every week. He can do it himself. There you go. There you go. He'll probably put out a roar or something. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Let Bro. freedom burn. What was that? Burr. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Look, he's frozen. He's frozen there. That's how bad the internet yeah. is. Out there. That's how, yeah, he's just frozen. I, I, he, I like, he, Look, the video is freezing all over the place. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> you can't move that fast, Aaron. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. So Tate, what's for lunch? I don't know. Uh, there's a new place uh, that just opened up the street from us. It's um, you would like it. It's like a Greek food place, but it's like the Greek Chipotle. So you go in there, you get a bowl, and Ooh. they line the outside of your bowl with like the hummus of your choice. And then they throw in, 
you know, it's, it's delicious. So I'm kind of craving uh, that place. It's, you know, really we, we had one of those places and they, they did not execute well. Really? This did one? Not, did not make it. Yeah. Ours is, I mean, it's a little bit later. It'd be nice to go for a later lunch there. Cause if you go during, you know, at noon, the line is an hour long. So this one's really, really good. I've only been there once, but uh, I like it thus far. You know what the new thing is to hear that's super hot is poke bowls. You have sushi burrito? Yeah. It's like, well, it's not sushi burrito. It's, I mean, but it's simpler. Yeah. It's like you I pick a rice it. or a lettuce and like your, 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 your proteins with like raw fish. Yeah. And then, and then like sauces and, you know, crab or, uh, you know, the, the, the you know, like, like the Japanese cucumber or, um, you know, it's, it's really good and filling and it's relatively for sushi. It's like nine, 10, 12 bucks, something like that. Yeah. We have one of those places too. I love it. It's great. Yeah. And I, I mean, in Tennessee, do they even have sushi? Yes, we do. But, yeah. Is it, I mean, there's like, a lot the, more barbecue places, but we do have sushi also. I mean, do you have to be church going to eat there? Like you got to pray before, like, you know, I hope I don't get food poisoning. This is not going to be fresh. No. No. Okay. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> what about you in Tampa? Wait, you're on, you're on mute. Sorry. Did you say what, what am I eating in Tampa or do, do we have sushi in Tampa? No, I know you have sushi in Tampa. It's a big city, but like, do you guys have those Poke Bowl places? I haven't really seen the Poke Bowl places, but I wouldn't uh, pay attention to them anyways. It might, yeah. I, I, it's not on my radar. I don't know. Like, you know, it's not, that's not uh, something I'm going to leap out on. But you know what, Mark? It might be like migrating its way across the country. Yeah. Yeah. Hawaii over. See, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing healthy all right guys well thanks so much for uh for jumping on it's always great seeing your faces and uh it's nice to have a new nickname for eric as well oh no eric is that thing gonna <laughs> stick i don't know uh, are we gonna make like a graphic of the of, of the hammer no we we heard a nice story about how you you hammered a coaching student though the Burnett's loved it. Yeah. 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 So they're like, he's, you know, he's nice, but he wants results. <laughs> I, we love it. <laughs> we love it. All right, guys, I'm going to go eat. Yep. Thanks. Guys. Talk to you later. You, ready? Yeah. See you later. Bye. Ah.